Hey guys, welcome back. In the last few lessons, we learned a lot about HDFS MapReduce, and we also wrote a MapReduce program to calculate the maximum closing price of each stock symbol in our stocks dataset. Even though the MapReduce program we saw was simple and easy to understand, we can agree that writing MapReduce program takes some effort. In the very least, you need to understand the concept of MapReduce. You need to know the basic understanding of different MapReduce phases. You need to know a programming language like Java, Python, or Scala to write a MapReduce program. And finally, and the most important thing, is to visualize the problem in MapReduce. And that takes some practice. But once you're done with the program, you need to test it with a smaller data set in a dev or test cluster. And then when all checks out, you then deploy your MapReduce program into production. This obviously takes a lot of time and effort, and not to mention some learning curve. Let's take our maximum closing price by stock symbol problem. Wouldn't it be so awesome to have a tool that take in few instructions and execute them in our Hadoop cluster and get us the same output? You know where I'm going with this. Apache Pig is our answer. Pig was developed at Yahoo to make MapReduce accessible to anyone who want to work with Hadoop cluster. Pig is now a top level project in Apache. Pig is widely used in the industry and a must know tool if you would like to get involved in the Hadoop ecosystem. In this lesson, I will show you with just four lines of Pig instructions how we can solve the same maximum closing price by stock symbol problem which took a couple of pages of code with the Java MapReduce program. Before I go any further, I have to mention that this lesson just scratched the surface of Pig. Pig is a lot more involved on a highly powerful tool with a lot of features like complex data types, implicit casting, joining data sets, support for macros and functions, etc. What this lesson will give you for sure is a taste for this awesome tool. The files for this lesson is under HIR w starter kit slash pig slash stocks when you get into this directory you'll see two files max close price dot pig is the file with pig instructions and the readme file has general instructions on how to run this pig script so let's open the max close price dot pig file take a look at the set of instructions that is it we can get the same result from these four lines of instructions as what we got with the MapReduce program. Pretty awesome, isn't it? So, pig instructions are written in pig Latin. What you see here is pig Latin instructions. Pig Latin is an easy to follow data flow language. Don't be scared that you have to learn a new language. It's not complicated at all. Let me walk you through step by step, okay? Take a look at the first instruction. Just read the instruction out loud. Load the data set in location user HIRW input stocks using pig storage comma as you're giving a list of columns like exchange symbol, date, open, high, low, close, volume, and adjacent close and their corresponding data types. The load instruction is used to load the data set. Since our data set is a comma delimited data set, we are using the pig storage load function. And you're also specifying the delimiter of your data set, which is comma in our case. Then we give a list of columns with the corresponding data types to match with what we see in our data set. That's simple, right? Finally, you give the loaded data set a name. In our case, we are naming our data set as stocks underscore record. In PIG, the stocks underscore record is called a relation. Each instruction will result in a relation. So stocks underscore record is a relation. Group by symbol is a relation. Maximum closing is a relation. You get the idea, right? So now we have the records loaded. And we have also given a name to the loaded records in the PIG script. So we can now use this name to refer to our loaded data set throughout our pick script. Remember, we are trying to calculate the maximum closing price by symbol. So the next thing we want to do is we want to group the records by symbol. And then we can calculate the maximum closing price by symbol. This instruction right here will group the records that you loaded by symbol. So we'll use the group by operator 
to group the records by symbol. Just read the instruction out loud. You're saying group stock underscore records, which is your data set, by symbol. That is it. And give the resulting group by records a name. Here, we are giving group by symbol as the name. Now that the records are grouped, we are ready to calculate the maximum closing price by symbol. Understanding the structure of group by symbol will help us understand the next for each instruction. Since group by symbol is a collection of stock records, group by symbol will result in two columns. The first column is the column which you use to group the records by. In our case, we use the symbol to group the stock records. So the first column in group by symbol will have symbol values like Apple, G, Ford, etc. You get the idea, right? But how can we refer the first column in group by symbol? It's very simple. We can simply refer to the first column as group, like you're doing it here. So the symbol here corresponds to group. Next, the second column of group by symbol is a collection of stock records for a given stock symbol. Let's take this for example. The first record in group by symbol is a collection of stock records for the stock symbol Apple. So in this case, your first column value will be Apple, which can be referred by simply group. The second column value will be a collection of stock records because we are grouping the stock records by symbol, right? And you can refer to that collection as stock records, like this right here. Now let's look at the for each instruction. Read the for each instruction like this. For each record in group by symbol, give me the group, which is nothing but the symbol, and the maximum closing price from the collection of records. Since the records are grouped together, we need to refer to the close price as stock underscore records dot close. Make sense? Perfect. Finally, we can use the store operator to store the output into HDFS. And we are using the pick storage function to specify the delimiter. So in this case, our output will be symbol and the maximum closing price, which will be delimited by comma. And the output location is this output pick stocks in HDFS. That is it. The script is now ready. Now we are ready to execute this pig script in our cluster. But before we execute, let's talk about what will happen when we execute a pig script. Pig first analyze the entire pig script, optimize the script if possible, and convert the script or pig laden instructions into one or more MapReduce jobs. And then submit the MapReduce jobs in the Hadoop cluster. So in the background, all the pig instructions will be translated into MapReduce jobs. But the nice thing is the user don't even have to know about the behind the scenes details. So let's try to execute the script in our cluster. You should have access to this cluster that I'm in right now, and you can execute the same script that I'm executing now. If you don't have access yet, get your free access at www.hadoopinrealworld.com slash Hadoop starter kit. I've also included the URL in the lesson notes. So let's see how we can run this big script. So if you go back to the directory, you can see another file called readme file. Open the readme file from the same directory. The readme file has instructions and details on how to execute the pig script. It has few information like what is the input location for the pig script, which we have already mentioned in the pig script, which is user hrw input stocks, and where this pig script will produce the output, which is output pig stocks. The next is you want to delete the output directory first because if the output directory is already there, pig will fail to execute. It will throw an error saying that the output directory is already there so he, it cannot override the output directory. So the first thing to do is make sure to delete the output directory if it's already there. And then let's execute the pig script. So first let's delete the output directory. Okay, so the output directory is now deleted. Now it's time to execute the pig script. All you have to do is just say pig and give the script name. There you go. So now the pig is taking your instructions in and translating them into MapReduce jobs. So it has already started executing the MapReduce job in the Hadoop cluster. All along, we can see the progress it is going to make. So it has already calculated it needs four splits, so it would launch four mappers.
So there you go, the MapReduce job is now complete. Let's look at the output. So the output is stored in this location right here. Output pick stocks. So we're gonna say Hadoop FS cat output pick stocks. Output pick stocks is a directory. So let's see what is in the directory and then let's try to output the file. Okay, so the output is stored in this file right here. So I'm gonna say Hadoop FS cat and give the file name. So there you go, here's your output. So a symbol with a closing price. That's exactly what we wanted. And this is the same output that we got from our MapReduce program. So there is no difference at all in the output, right? So finally, what I wanted to show you is, you can also see the MapReduce job which was executed in our Hadoop cluster with this URL right here. So take this URL, open a browser, and copy the URL there. So there you go, this is our MapReduce job which was executed by PIG. As you can see here, the job name is PIGLADEN max close price dot PIG. So as you can see, there were four input splits as we saw, so we are, we are seeing four mappers here, which was executed in different nodes, and then you can see we have one reduce. So the information that you see here is more similar to what we saw with our MapReduce job execution. Because it makes perfect sense, right, because PIG took your pig instructions and converted them into MapReduce job. But the beautiful thing here is we did not write a single line of Java code to produce the result because pig behind the scenes took care of everything. That is it guys. As I was saying, this is by no means a complete overview of pig. And there is a lot more cool stuff you can do like joining multiple data set, custom functions, etc. with pig. But I hope this lesson gave you a good introduction to Apache pig. With that, let's wrap this lesson. See you in the next lesson.